Race two of the 2019 a Service Portuguese round from the Algarve International Circuit. Just 10 races remain in the 2019 Motul FIM Superbike World Championship, but with 250 points still up for grabs, the title race is far from over. Tourist hotspot Portimao is the perfect backdrop for the circuit, one of the most popular venues of the campaign for SBK stars. One final blast through the roller coaster. 4.5 kilometers of contours, crests, and changing camber. 15 corners, mostly right handers, including the low speed turns three and four, and the famously long drag through turn 15 to complete the lap. Sectors one and two are where most of the position changes have taken place this weekend so far. But in the second half of the lap, there is plenty of scope for making time up as well. The master of this place, Jonathan Ray, is an expert through turn 14. The Algarve has become the spiritual home of the Portuguese round over the last decade. This will be the 23rd race staged here. The outright lap record and the race lap record have both fallen this weekend. The pace as hot as the weather here in Portugal. Good afternoon and welcome back to Portimao. Live trackside ahead of race two in World Superbikes Portuguese round. Steve English alongside me. After his struggles in race one and with the demands of two races in one day, the big question ahead of this one is whether Alvaro Bautista's injury will hold up and allow him to challenge Jonathan Ray at the front. As with every passing race, the reigning champion moves closer to taking the 2019 crown. Yeah, being closer to that championship actually means that Alvaro Bautista could start today as the favourite here in race two. He's going to qualify on the second spot on the grid. So he's now not got to try and get through that turn one in that midfield chaos that we've seen over the first two races of the weekend. Now he's got a clear run down to turn one. He can just pick and choose how he wants to approach that. We know that he's good off the line traditionally. We know that Ducati's very good off the line. So for Alvaro Bautista, he'll aim for the whole shot. If you're Jonathan Ray and you're holding a really commanding championship lead going into this race do you really mind following your championship rival just prodding him trying to put him under some pressure or do you want to try and make sure you win this race i think jonathan ray wouldn't be too adverse to just following alvaro bautista making sure that you only give up a few points to him but over the course of the weekend you've once again extended that championship lead it's up to bautista how he wants to approach this race but uh, the number 19 is certainly going to be one of the favorites here in this race Let's take a look then at how things stacked up in the uh, Super Pole race and therefore the grid positions that we'll see in this one. Jonathan Ray it was who took the uh, chequered flag by a two second margin over the recovering Alvaro Bautista. Nine points on the board for Bautista and most importantly, as Steve said, a place on the front row of the grid. Likewise, Alex Lowe's who starts from P3. Top rack, Razgat, Leoglu, Leon Haslam and Michael Vandermark on row number two. Tom Sykes, Sandro Cortese and Loris Baz, row three. And then the rest of the riders pecking order is determined on the basis of their efforts in the uh, Super Bowl session from 10th uh, position down. Chaz Davies 10th in race one, uh, sorry, in the uh, Tissot Super Bowl race rather. Uh, but because of his results in Tissot Super Bowl, he starts all the way back down in 14th. He was uh, beaten in single lap pace by Torres, Melandri, Reiterberger and Rinaldi. So a lot of work to do here for Chaz Davies. Yeah, loads of work for Chaz to do he's going to need a great start and we saw in the Super Bowl race that he struggled to try and make the moves now part of the reason for that comes from the fact that in the 10 lap Super Bowl race everyone's got a bit more grip they're all having that ability to ride a little bit harder you don't have to think as much about managing that tyre whereas in the 20 lap race here in Portimao track condition around about that 44 45 degrees marks so this is as hot as we've seen it all the way through this weekend this is going to be tough to manage that tyre this could be one race where Chaz Davis can actually try and adapt a little bit easier than some of his rivals out there on track this is where Chaz might be able to make his way through that field but it's going to be a big ask for him to be able to follow up yesterday's podium with another I think if Chaz can get himself into the top five it's a good performance on the number seven Ducati stunning performance it was from him in race number one to uh, make up so many positions as he did off the line from 12th in the early stages and then take that second place as you said yeah great performance in yesterday's race from Davis he looked like the Davis of old he looked like a rider that was just willing to be able to make those moves be aggressive and then he just didn't quite have the same pace as this man Jonathan Ray at the start of yesterday's race but Davis was able just to consolidate that second place pull away a bit of a gap from Michael Vandermark and then hold on to a very 
solid and secure 20 points. Davis would love to be able to do something like that today, but it's going to be very hard to make another start like that down in towards turn one in this feature length race. Incredible recent run, as you saw on the graphic previously, for Jonathan Ray. Um, barely defeated in recent rounds. He took second place, though, when he needed to in race two in Laguna. Uh, there is a possibility that we could end up in a similar situation today, but only if Bautista can actually get in front of Ray. If Ray's out in front, he's going to be quite comfortable to lead this race. Yeah, I was doing a bit of number crunching there as well. Just you can see Ben Spees there with uh, his leathers from his World Championship winning season 10 years ago. He's just after doing a parade lap here around the Portimao circuit for the fans. And uh, Spees, once again, uh, center of attention and uh, where he should be as well because Ben Spees, whenever he came over from the AMA championship as it was at the time, came across as a multiple American champion, a rider where everyone sort of thought, let's see what he can do when he gets to Europe. And suddenly he went in, took on all the big boys, went out, won the championship as a rookie, set a bar for every rookie after that, including this man, Alvaro Bautista. And after his form at the start of the season, there was the expectation that he might be able to be a rookie world champion like Spees. Spees, of course, won and done in more or less BK, but wrote so many single season records in that season. Still looks fit enough. Well, Ben Spees, certainly he's been back uh, riding quite a bit over the last couple of years. We've seen him in uh, enduro and trying to get himself back up to fitness for that. And, uh, making comebacks like that. There's been talk even of uh, potentially seeing someone like Spees come back to race endurance as well. He's talked about that being one of the few things he'd like to do now at this stage and obviously maybe uh, a tie in there in the future for him. But it'd be great to see him back again racing. But uh, it's always good when you see Spees come back into the world SBK paddock. Always welcome back with open arms. Seeing some of the action from this weekend so far, there has been plenty of action, plenty of overtaking. Had some uh, two great races in uh, World SBK, um, each with their own nuances. We saw riders fighting their way through from lower down the order in race number one, the likes of Raz Gatlioglu and uh, Davies, um, Alvaro Bautista with his first bend issue in race one. Uh, and then we saw more action in the Super Pole race earlier on today. Do you expect the pecking order to be broadly similar to that one in this one race two? Well, the one thing about it is that we've now got that warmer track conditions up to 45 degrees. It's going to be very different in this race compared to what we saw in the Super Pole race. This man, Alex, though, was really strong in the Super Pole race, ran in second for most of it. But just in that final lap, Alvaro Bautista able to make the move. You can see how hard Lowe's is pushing there. Just uh, smoke coming off the boots as he gets that foot down on the run down in towards turn one. But Lowe's really good in that Super Pole race this morning. It'll be interesting to see if they could make a step forward with the tire life for the feature length race, though. And uh, who is it that could be best placed to capitalise on uh, tyre wear as we go on through the longer 20 lap race? Well, top racks look very good on the number 54, Pachetti Kawasaki. So keep an eye out for him. He looks like he's had that bit of an edge over the likes of Leon Haslam in that fight. Uh, between the Kawasaki riders. We saw yesterday Michael Vandermark made a great start, was able to get himself into the podium spots and then just open that gap to the riders behind them. But uh, Vandermark struggled really badly in the Super Bowl race, no feeling with the bike, and uh, he was talking afterwards about uh, just the amount of time that he was losing through turn eight. Then we saw him quite a few times in that run over the crest between eight and nine that he was losing a lot of time. We could see how physical the bike was through there. So they're going to need to make a lot of progress with that to try and give Vandermark a bike that can challenge for another podium. Raz Gatlioglu was certainly touted as a real contender for taking his first World Superbike race win here this weekend, as yet he hasn't had a first podium, and much of that is down to the results of the Super Pole session. Yeah, struggling in the Super Pole session to get any more performance out of the qualifying tyre compared to the race tyre. Only found a couple of thousands of a second with the qualifying tyre, so top rack just not quite able to get the most from that. It requires a different riding style, and uh, he's just still trying to learn how to do that and how to get the most from it in the recent test here in Portimao. They actually spent quite a bit of time on the qualifying tyre just to try and understand what you have to do with it. And uh, it's just a case of trying to do it when it counts. It's always easy that in theory you should do X, Y, and Z, but uh, once you're down into that uh, crucible of the pressure of a Super Bowl session, it's a very different thing. He'll line up alongside uh, Leon Haslam. Those two have been on a remarkably similar pace this weekend. And of course, it's all against the backdrop of the fact that there are plenty of rides still not yet confirmed for 2020. Uh, much of the summer break has been spent with rumour and uncertainty. Some of those have been cleared up this weekend so far, but there are still rides up for grabs. Yeah, some of it has been cleared up with the likes of Tom Sykes confirmed at BMW for a second year. He'll be joined by Eugene Laverty. So we know that lineup. We know this man, Jonathan Ray, is back on 
Honda Kawasaki next year, but who's going to be alongside him? We've heard that Alex Lowe's has been linked with that KRT ride, and uh, it definitely seems to be interest from Kawasaki to uh, bring Lowe's in. We've also heard that uh, Kawasaki has been in contact with Johan Zarco, but it uh, looks like that hasn't led to too much. Zarco very keen just to stay in the Grand Prix paddock in some capacity, but uh, that could open up a spot. Leon Haslam might move out to Pichetti, of course. He's got a lot of support from Kawasaki in Japan, and uh, obviously with Toprak seemingly leaving Pichetti, and uh, that's just waiting to be confirmed by Yamaha. But uh, with Toprak leaving for the Paddy Yamaha team, it means that Pichetti need to potentially find a new sponsor and uh, having some increased support from Japan wouldn't uh, do them too many too much harm so lots of changes that could potentially happen of course like few of the riders seem to be the main fo focal points of the movements you can see Chaz Davis heading down pit lane and Davis already secure he had a two-year contract he'll be joined by Scott Redding for next year on the Aruba Ducati so we know that some teams are fully confirmed. We know that some teams have some riders confirmed, but there's an awful lot of uncertainty around because we still are waiting for confirmation as to will Tenkazi run two bikes? That seems pretty much to be for sure that they will run two Yamahas next year. So there'll be six Yamahas on the grid. Loris Baz looks likely to stay on one of them. Alex Lowe's has been offered something from Yamaha, it seems, to stay on a Yamaha. That could be with Tenkazi on their second bike. Karakasuro that we just saw win the Super Sport race, he's stepping up for next season and uh, still waiting for a confirmation on that but it looks like a move to the GRT team has been agreed so some change is happening but uh, it's still just the final confirmation being awaited by most people. As for the remainder of this season of course as well as the fight for top spot between Ray and Bautista we've got an enthralling tussle over third position Alex Lowe's and Michael Vandermark have been swapping and changing as far as fortunes are concerned through this campaign each have had their own rough patch their own misfortune their own problems there's nothing to choose between the two of them now just a single point and uh, well they've already changed positions twice this weekend yeah there's nothing to choose between them in the championship and over the course of their time as teammates there's been nothing to choose between them as well over three years very closely matched between the two of them and uh, it was interesting talking to both Vandermark and Lowe's about the relationship that they have with one another. Obviously, your first target is always to beat your teammate, but when Lowe's talks about Vandermark, he talks about how much he's improved by having to beat Michael Vandermark. When Vandermark talks about it, he talks about the work that goes on between both sides of the garages to improve the bike, the relationship they have with each other. And uh, you might well be looking at your teammate as that first name on the timesheet, seeing if you've beaten them, but there's clearly always been that level of respect between the two Paddy Yamaha teammates. I suppose to an extent between them, if you uh, add uh, Alex Lowe's best result this weekend with uh, Michael Vandermark's best result this weekend, it's uh, an extremely strong performance, but neither of them have had 100% consistency at the front of the field. Shows how small the margins really are when you get to the top. Yeah, the margins really are tiny for being able to make those steps, and that comes from just how competitive it is right now, particularly in that fight for third. We know that Jonathan Ray and Alvaro Bautista have moved themselves ahead of the field in terms of overall through the season but the gap between everyone else is actually being quite close. One of the big reasons for that is there's so much parity of material in the championship now. If you're running a Kawasaki like Top Rack Rides, got a Yoglu in the Pachetti Racing Team, you can have pretty much the exact same spec of machine as the factory Kawasaki. So you can see Top Rack on our left. He's just qualified in front of Leon Haslam after beating him in the Super Pole race, but they've got by and large the exact same bike. Yamaha go out to make sure that GRT, Tenkade and the Crescent Racing squad, the Paddy Yamaha team, that they've all got the same material and that's why all the Yamahas can be so closely matched. Let's take a look at the grid then. A reminder that the top nine positions are the based are based on the results of Tiso Super Pole race from earlier on here today. So our front three on the grid is our podium trio from that Tiso Super Pole race. Jonathan Ray, who's been unbeaten so far this weekend. Alvaro Bautista starts alongside him and Alex Lowe's from P3. Ray, the master of this circuit, as we've already said, he's got that unbeaten run stretching back years. He's unbeaten on the Kawasaki around this track and he's got a winning run start to develop in 2019 as well. Yeah, why is he so strong in that Kawasaki? We could see there the team around him, all the same people that he's had since he moved to Kawasaki in 2016. We saw his electronics engineer Davide there just getting the bike ready. We saw his mechanics, they're all the same pair of Reba, his crew chief. Having that stability is what gives Jonathan Ray his biggest strength. Alvaro Bautista starting alongside him. Of course, he had to work his way through from the uh, lower reaches of the field. He was all the way down in 18th position after the first few turns in race number one, following contact with his teammate, Chaz Davies. Recovered spectacularly to fourth position. Had to put in another recovery ride in the Tissot Super Pole race to get up into second place. Bautista's got to get off to a good start here, surely. 
Yeah, Bautista's going to need that, but he can get off the line well. Now he's got a clear run down to turn one. There's no excuses for trying to be a little bit careful through there. Yesterday, starting from the second row of the grid in sixth position, he got caught out down in towards turn one, got pushed to the outside, fell all the way down the order. He needs to avoid that at all costs. Completing the front row, Alex Lowe's the second row of the grid. Riders who finished fourth to sixth in the Tiso Superpole race earlier on here today. Top rack, Razgatlioglu, sixth and fourth places from this weekend so far. Hardly disastrous results, but considering that he had four podiums in the previous five races coming into this weekend in Portugal, he'll be looking for a little bit more to end the weekend on a high hit. Yeah, Top Rack's got the pace to be able to finish on the podium in this race. He's been fast all the way through the weekend, and uh, it was, mar it was a, just a sign of how much progress they've made that yesterday, after being beaten by Leon Haslam and the factory Kawasaki team, that the team were disappointed to have only finished sixth. It shows just how much progress they've been making this year. Leon Haslam, uh, two fifth places for him, and that's where he is in the championship as well. He is not too far adrift of the race for third position in the overall standings, but he needs to perk it up a little bit as far as podium finishes are concerned in the latter stages. Really good consistency in 2019, and that's been the key for Haslam. Beaten once by uh, Razgatlioglu last time out, he got the better of Razgatlioglu, as you said, Steve, in race one. Yeah, a few mistakes through the season from Haslam, and uh, he definitely looked back at Phillip Island in particular as one race that got away from him. But uh, overall, he's been pretty consistent all the way through the year, and the Kawasaki team pretty happy with how the year's actually gone for the reigning British champion. Our uh, lap record holder around this circuit, the absolute outright master of Portimao, who made his debut around this circuit in World Superbikes over a decade ago. The man to beat, and the question that is on everyone's lips is, can Jonathan Ray be beaten around this Algarve International circuit? Well, I think if we're going to find anyone that can beat him, it's going to be Alvaro Bautista. Bautista, with that top speed advantage, we saw how significant it was compared to the other Kawasaki riders. Now, if he's able to make a clean start, give himself the chance to hold shot, it's going to be difficult for Jonathan Ray to beat him just because Jonathan's going to be a lot faster from the exit of turn one through to turn 14. But Bautista really strong through turn 15, able to use the wings on the Ducati to give him stability and then good top speed over the line. We certainly saw Bautista uh, soaring his way past over the down the start finish trait, uh, both yesterday and indeed earlier on here today. Just caught a glimpse of Alex Lowe's, who we missed on our way through the field. Third place last time out, of course, after seventh in race number one. And almost the opposite fortunes for Michael Vandermark, who took a solid third position in race one, but had a pretty quiet race down in sixth place in the Super Bowl race. Yeah, you can see Vandermark, that's not the order he's putting on there. That's something just to try and keep him cool down there on the grid. And really hot conditions here in Portimao. 30 degrees air temperature, 44, 45 degrees track temperature. So as hot as we've had all the way through the weekend. Third row off the grid then, Tom Sykes, Sandro Cortese and Loris Baz rounding out the uh, top nine finishers from the CISO Super Pole race. Sykes who fell in race one and ended up remounting to get three points for 13th position. Back up and running in the top ten with a seventh place in the Super Pole race. Hasn't really had podium pace though. Uh, over a single lap, yes, for the Super Pole session, but not during race distances. He struggled to go the, uh, the long haul, I think, by lap number four on each occasion he's been out of the podium positions. Yeah, Sykes just hasn't had that pace this weekend in the test as well that we had here a couple of weeks ago. A couple of crashes during the test, a couple of crashes yesterday as well for Sykes. So it has been a little bit tough here in Portimao for him, but he's been able to give himself a chance with that third row start just of being able to try and come through if possible. Two changes to the lineup for this weekend. Uh, Takahashi coming in to replace Leon Kamiya, who is present this weekend, but in a non-riding capacity, unfortunately. Uh, his injury, he's still not completely recovered. Takahashi, though, coming in. And the other addition to the lineup is Sylvain Barrier, who starts from the very back, having finished at 20th last time out and indeed in the Super Bowl session. Yeah, and uh, crew chief Chris Pike there on umbrella duty as well for Takahashi. Takahashi, a really talented rider. When you talk to the Japanese engineers over in HRC, they always rave about Takahashi and say that he's a huge talent but when you talk to the Japanese media or anyone that's covered him throughout their career they also say that one of the biggest issues for him has been that he just is very happy in Japan he's a bit shy and uh, maybe just working within a Japanese team on the world stage that's the chance that he needs to try and make the move from the Japanese Superbike Championship onto the world stage and obviously for Takahashi heavily linked with a move to this championship next year on that HRC machine. Clearly the problem for him is that he uh, can't show uh, too much potential on that uh, Honda. The uh, 
three of the back four riders on the grid are Honda runners. Yeah, the big thing for Honda this year isn't so much about the outright results, it's just about gathering as much information and data as possible. They should have a new bike that they'll reveal at the Tokyo show, it seems, at the end of the year, and that should be the basis for next year's World SBK machine. And if that's the case, all the data that they generate from this year just gets fed into that program, and then you're able to use this as a real stepping stone for next season. Row three, Tom Sykes, Sandro Cortese and Loris Baz. Here is Baz. It's been a, a challenging weekend. He started with the pace to really chase after a potential podium position. Uh, but 16th in uh, race number one after a fall. He'd had a fall in the Super Bowl session that had hamstrung him to some extent anyway. Ninth position with a recovery ride. That overtake on Chaz Davies for ninth position in the Super Bowl race. Absolutely critical for uh, Loris Baz because it enables him to get onto the third row of the grid. Yeah, Baz doing a good job all the way through this weekend. Just a real shame he had that crash when he put the qualifying tyre in during the Super Bowl session because he had the potential to be able to qualify inside the top two, three rows of the grid. And then he's got the pace and consistency to actually be quite strong in the race. So keep an eye out for the Tenkadi Yamaha on that number 76 machine. Row number four, Jordi Torres, Marco Melandri and uh, Marcus Reiterberger. Uh, these three were a row higher in uh, the Tiso Superpole race earlier on here today, but all slipped out of the top nine places. Thankfully for them, they uh, all did well in that uh, Super Bowl session. So uh, at very least, fourth position is a concert, fourth row rather is a consolation. Torres, Melandri and Reiterberger. Uh, for Melandri, ninth in race number one, 13th in the Super Bowl race, a non-scoring effort there. And you can see Miguel Oliveira on the right, the MotoGP rider, of course. And uh, for Oliveira, he's been one of the big stars of Portuguese motorsport and finally able to give Portugal that Grand Prix winner over the last few years. And uh, Oliveira doing a really good job on that Tectois KTM this year. So uh, certainly uh, there is a desire to see motorsport in uh, Portugal and the uh, Superbike World Championship uh, certainly uh, among the absolute premium events around this circuit. Marcus Reiterberger completing the fourth row of the grid. Solid weekend for Reiterberger, not exactly spectacular. He uh, beat Tom Sykes in race one, but only after Sykes had uh, suffered a fall, he was well adrift, Reiterberger, and 14th in the Super Bowl race. Hence, he starts down in 12th. Yeah, Reiterberger, though, through the course of the weekend, he's at top 10 pace in the practice sessions, just about trying to hook it up during the race. But at least for Reiterberger, he's made some progress with that bike this weekend. Row five, Michael Ruben Rinaldi, Chaz Davies and Eugene Laverty. What a strong fifth row that is. Uh, Ruben Rinaldi with a 10th uh, position finish in race one and 11th position finish in the Super Bowl race. He's been there or thereabouts and only uh, by two positions does he end up slipping down to 13th on the grid for this one. Yeah, for Rinaldi, it's been a pretty tough year on that Barney Ducati. But uh, as you said, Alex, three Ducatis on that row of the grid with that man Chaz Davies in the middle of it just in front of Eugene Laverty. So uh, Davies uh, heading away for a last minute leap, most probably, uh, as he lines up in 14th position in this race too. Certainly not uh, how we would have anticipated the weekend to go for him after a strong performance in Laguna, uh, then a uh, strong performance in race number one, but elsewhere during this weekend, he hasn't been able to show that kind of pace with any consistency. Yeah, and that's the unfortunate thing. It's just about trying to get the most from the bike all the way through the race weekend and uh, hasn't been able to do that this weekend technical issue in yesterday's race and uh, one of the big issues that they have is that uh, the progress they made during the test hasn't seemed to correlate across into the race weekend Eugene Laverty will be the rider who completes the uh, fifth row of the grid we saw uh, a shot of Leandro Tati Mercado who'll be starting on at row number six alongside him Takahashi and uh, this man uh, Kianari when we're talking about contracts for uh, next season understand that uh, Kianari is uh, part way through a two-year contract with Morawaki uh, that doesn't necessarily mean he'll be on the grid here next season yeah lots of time racing with Morawaki in the Japanese championship as well no guarantees that we'll see Kianari on the grid next year a lot of talk that we will see four Hondas on the grid next season and obviously Alvaro Bautista being the rider most regularly linked with that move to HRC and to front their program here in World SBK next year. Certainly doesn't appear that that uh, is, a, as, is a done deal quite yet because uh, no announcement has been made just yet. Certainly Bautista moving away from Ducati and uh, his place being taken by Scott Redding. As for uh, other announcements, Eugene Laverty shored up with uh, BMW for next season, but far from enjoying the type of weekend he's enjoyed in the past around this Algarve international circuit, it's been a tough one for Laverty. 
yeah, jumped the gun on it a couple of moments ago whenever I was talking about technical issues and uh, one of the problems for the riders, I was actually, I was talking about Eugene Laverty, got myself mixed up with the fifth row of the grid there, but Eugene Laverty had a technical problem in yesterday's race, just has struggled a little bit through the course of this weekend so far. One of the biggest issues they had is they made a big change with the rear shock at the Portimao test a couple of weeks ago gave them a lot of progress during the test it hasn't correlated to it during the race weekend and that's been the issue for Eugene Laverty but uh, we'll wait and see what he can do during the course of this 20 laps clearly for uh, riders such as Alessandro Del Bianco uh, the Super Bowl race doesn't offer many opportunities to get in the mix because the Honda has been uh, well off the pace and it's only been in races where frankly there have been retirements or uh, unusual situations with the weather uh, that those Honda riders have been able to scratch around for points the rivalry is in and amongst themselves really Takahashi Kianari and Del Bianco only an opportunity for them to score if there should be uh, retirements further up the field, one suspects. Here is Sylvain Barrier, who's been battling on through this weekend. He'll be looking forward to uh, heading to uh, Manicourt in just a couple of weeks' time, of course, for the French round. Plenty more action in World Superbike still to come in 2019. And uh, unfortunately for Barrier, it's been a bit of a baptism of fire. Yeah, for Sylvain, of course, he's at the two-day test here. Now a couple of days over the course of this race weekend, but a new bike for him. And uh, obviously he's raced in the uh, British Championship, Moto America, Stock 1000, and the Italian Championship over the last few years. But uh, very different to jump yourself straight back into the deep end with the Sharks and World SBK. Back to the front of the field then. It's the podium trio from the Super Bowl race ready to resume their rivalries. And the top three in the championship are the top three on the grid as well. They'll be going head-to-head, -head, bar to bar, into the first turn. Ray, Bautista and Lowe's for race two in Portimao. Race two in Portimao, the first of 10 remaining in the 2019 season as the countdown begins to the final round. The final race of World Superbikes, well, a service Portuguese round, is a 20-lap blast around the roller coaster. Men and machines in peak condition following a weekend of fine-tuning ahead of this feature race. Not so, perhaps Alvaro Bautista, who withdrew early from testing here two weeks ago, limited his Friday running and now has to contend with two races in one day. His championship challenge already having gone off the rails before the summer break, the Spaniard needs to recover his early season Midas touch if he's to take the fight to Jonathan Ray. Steve English alongside me, Jonathan Ray starting from pole position once again, but Bautista far further up the order this time around than he has been previously, and that gives him a real opportunity to take the fight to the front. Ray and Bautista, for the first time perhaps this weekend, head to head. For Bautista, the big thing is get a clean lap, clean run off the line down in towards turn one on the opening lap because if he's able to force the issue down in turn one, he gives himself a chance of beating Jonathan Ray. If Jonathan Ray hits the front at turn one, he can break away from everyone else, including Alvaro Bautista. And the one thing that neither rider will want is for anyone else to get in the mix. Alex Lowe's, for example. Yeah, for Alex Lowe's, he's actually made a change from his tyre as well compared to what he used in the Super Bowl race. He was the only rider that used that development rear tyre. Slightly different construction for that rear tyre. The same compound as everyone else, but a different construction. He's going back to what everyone else was using during the course of uh, the weekend. Interestingly, though, Alvaro Bautista's gone the other way. He's gone to that development uh, rear tyre as well. So different construction for Alvaro on that rear tyre compared to all the other riders at the front of the field. Top performers in the championship starting on the front row. Top performers from uh, Tissot Super Pole race. This is certainly going to be uh, a close one. Yeah, we've been waiting all year really for a proper no holds barred battle between Jonathan Ray and Alvaro Bautista. Ray might have a 96 point lead, but now's what's going to be interesting to see. Does he want to win this race more than he wants to win the championship? Does he want to try and just reinsert himself 100% over Alvaro Bautista? Or is it going to be a bit like what we saw in race two at Laguna Seca when Chaz Davis came through to the front, where Jonathan Ray kind of thought, you know what, I'll take my save 20 points, I'll leave here with a championship lead. As it stands right now with 96 points out in front, Jonathan Ray can do whatever he wants in this race, just as long as he avoids making mistakes. I suppose that the uh, one thing that is worth observing is how close the two of them were in terms of times throughout practice. Uh, Friday, Saturday morning, every time there's been one of those sessions on uh, race tyres, they've been absolutely pegged together. It's only the Super Bowl performance, or lack of it, for Alvaro Bautista that's kept him so far back from Ray through the races so far. Yeah, there's been nothing to choose between them in the practice sessions, but 
practice very different to the race as Bautista with that shoulder injury. Maybe that's played a role in why he's been a little bit careful on the run down in towards turn one. But the good thing about starting from the front row is you can dictate things. If you're in the mid pack, everything is dictated to you. You react to everything around you, whereas up in front, you can instigate everything. So Alvaro Bautista, look for him to get off the line clearly and try and make a move down in towards turn one. Alex Lowe's good off the line as well on the number 22. He's going to try and take that inside line and pick up a couple of spots. Hold your breath, it's going to be a good one. The mobile phone's out to record the moment. Race number two, about to get underway here in Portimao. Ray, Bautista, Lowe's, the top three in the championship on the front row, and we're underway, and Bautista's completely missed the start. Razgatlioglu's made a good one, cutting through into second position. Bautista now on the outside line into turn one, side by side with Leon Haslam cutting through. Lowe's is down to fourth, Haslam with a great start, up into P3. Bautista relegated down the order, and there goes the theory of a head-to-head -head against Jonathan Ray. He's trying to get around the outside of turn number three. It'll give him the inside for four, but now Michael van der Mark's trying to get into the action as well, and this is a disastrous start once again for Alvaro Bautista. Yeah, Bautista's struggle on the full fuel load in each of the races so far this weekend, makes a bad start initially off the line, and then gets himself boxed out down in towards turn three and turn five. He's trying to answer back, but he's still behind Michael van der Mark. At least he's managed to hold off Tom Sykes there in sixth spot. But defending against Tom Sykes, Bautista hasn't got the pace on the opening lap. Jonathan Ray leads us then with Razgatlioglu second and Leon Haslam in third. The uh, Kawasaki fans will be rubbing their hands together. This is a great opportunity not only for Ray, it's that wobble once again for uh, Michael Vandermark that could enable Alvaro Bautista to get pegged onto the back of him. Can Bautista get through down the start finish straight? Ray not pulling away here, Razgatlioglu occupying second. Yeah, we saw something just uh, bouncing on the racetrack as well in that run down in towards turn eight. So maybe just a stone, but uh, you can see for top rack prize, Cody Ogle, he's doing a good job here just to be able to apply that pressure onto Jonathan Ray. And uh, the number 54 has been fast all the way through the weekend. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if top rack can just challenge Jonathan Ray here. I think if top rack gets half a chance, he's going to show no respect or no mercy to Jonathan Ray. He's going to force Jonathan Ray to react to what top rack does. Top rack wants to make sure that it's not going to be like in Mizano or Donington Park where he was just trying to almost know that you're up against a championship contender, you don't want to influence the championship. Now for Top Rack, it's trying to make sure that you know that you can try and make those moves. Alvaro Bautista making those moves, he's down the inside of Michael Vandermark and up into fifth position. He pretty much connected with Vandermark as he swept across for the racing line into turn number one. They haven't dropped the uh, uh, group directly behind the lead quartet, they've got a bit of an advantage over Bautista, something to the tune of half a second as they came over the line, the uh, timing beam to start lap number two but Bautista is eating up the meters and next in line is Alex Lowe's best of the Yamahas in fourth position Raz Gattioglu up at the front right on the tail of Jonathan Ray yeah top rack doing a really good job here against Jonathan Ray we know the top rack can manage that tire quite well we know yesterday he was disappointed not to beat Leon Haslam in the Kawasaki scrap now he's trying to beat Jonathan Ray we know Ray is great here he's won nine in a row here in Portimao but uh, top rack's going to make sure he's going to have to earn it here in race two Top rack though himself is under pressure from Leon Haslam, who we know has had the pace to match the Turkish rider all weekend. They've been line abreast in each of the two races so far. Alex Lowe's, well, he's not losing that advantage over Alvaro Bautista too quickly. It's as he unleashes the speed onto the start finish straight though that Bautista really becomes a menace. And he's not too far behind Jonathan Ray. If you compare the two of them, it's still only about a second covering the uh, top six here. One group which is starting to drop Tom Sykes down in seventh position and Michael Vandermark having difficulty keeping up with the coattails of Alvaro Bautista as well. As we come towards the uh, start finish straight then, Bautista will see if he can close down Alex Lowe's any further. Here we go into lap three. Ray from Razgatlioglu from Haslam. Lowe's close behind. Here comes Bautista. He's certainly got the speed. Ducks to the inside of Lowe's but Lowe's out breaks him into one and for the moment at least Bautista restricted to fit. Yeah, Lowe's really strong in the brakes just like what we saw in the Super Bowl race as well. If Bautista wants to make that move he needs to make it nice and early. He exits turn 15 really well, but the big thing for Bautista is with those wings, he's able to come across the crest on that start finish straight and still keep that front end down, still be able to be full gas all the way through there and carry all that momentum. And that's what gives him the big advantage in that start finish straight as well as just the sheer power of that Ducati.
Fastest up of the race so far for Alvaro Bautista, who clearly was faster than the uh, four riders in front of him on that previous lap. Close four at seventh position. Loris Baz got alongside Tom Sykes, but Sykes managed to uh, hold the line. So action right the way through the field, as ever in World Superbikes. Sykes defending P7, but we've very much got uh, two completely separate groups now. There's more than half a second behind Michael Vandermark, who himself is beginning to become tailed off from this uh, lead group ahead of him. Uh, Bautista, you suspect it's only a matter of time before he gets through on lows. He's faster than the riders in front of him. Can't show that pace at the moment. Yeah, and this is where it's going to be interesting for all the riders in this group. If you're Alex Lowe's, you know you're going to be under pressure, under attack from Alvaro Bautista. So you want to try and make sure you're as fast as possible all the way through the lap. The move's going to be made down that start finish straight. You want to make sure you're able just to lose as little time as possible to Razgari Oglu and Haslam so that you're still able to fight for that uh, podium spot. This is where it's set up out of turn 14 through turn 15, the long right-hander, and back onto the start-finish straight. Here they come, Bautista directly behind Alex Lowe's. He's the man who's fastest on the track at the moment. The top three have broken ever so slightly from Lowe's. Bautista should get the move done early in the straight this time around. That's going to give him the advantage into turn at number one. Meanwhile, it's getting close for second position as well, but Razgatlioglu for the moment holds on against Haslam. Bautista's going to shake up these leaders in uh, a couple of laps time. Yeah, Bautista we know is faster on that straight. That's where he's made the moves on Haslam and Razgari Oglu in uh, both the races so far this weekend so you'd expect him to try and do that once again on the next lap and just pick them off one after the other Jonathan Ray hasn't opened up a big gap here he hasn't tried to open, have the same pace that we saw in yesterday's race he's in the 1 minute 42s we saw in yesterday's race that he was straight away down into those 1 minute 41s so uh, Jonathan Ray a little bit slower in this race we know the track conditions are a bit hotter we know that uh, the conditions are very different to what we had in uh, some of the other sessions this weekend but these other riders able to go with Ray in these early stages of the race yesterday Ray said that he really ate into his tyres in those early laps so maybe he's trying to manage that a little bit right now Alvaro Bautista is certainly trying to manage a place on the podium in this one. Leon Haslam is the target for him to get up the inside, perhaps into turn number one and try and come through for third position. Tire management perhaps from Jonathan Ray and in front, but he's not dropping the group behind. And the danger is he will come under attack from Alvaro Bautista. The question for Bautista, though, is whether the Spaniard A has the physical strength to get to the end of the race riding at this breakneck pace and indeed uh, whether Bautista will have the tyres because he's once again uh, made a hash of the start and had to weave his way through the field. They come through 14 and 15 again. This is where we've seen Bautista make the vast majority of his overtaking manoeuvres this weekend so far. Is he close enough to Haslam? It certainly looks as though he is. He gets a good run off that final turn and uh, tucks in behind Haslam. Razgati has got right alongside Jonathan Ray meanwhile. Into turn number one they go. All four riders trying to shake up their positions. Razgati can't get through on Ray but Bautista has got the job done on Leon Haslam for third position. Yeah, Ray's pace just very slow right now, 42-6, so that Kawasaki looks like it's got some sort of an issue. And uh, for Jonathan Ray, it'd be interesting to know exactly what the issue is. He said yesterday he felt like the tyre was spinning on that rear wheel as well and uh, just had a lot of grip issues from it. And uh, maybe just another issue here for Jonathan Ray. Saw something fly off the Kawasaki at the start of the race, then that run down in towards 8 and 9. I thought at the time it might have just been a stone or something like that, but uh, maybe just having some uh, tyre issues there for Jonathan Ray. Jonathan Ray, still your leader for the moment at least, but he's not got the pace to stay there by the looks of it, and Bautista will be eyeing up a real opportunity now, because if Alvaro Bautista can get to the front and some of the others that are challenging Ray at the moment can get past him as well, that will be critical in the context of the championship. Bautista's got to keep a cool head. He's in a good position here to challenge for a first race win for quite some time. It's been too long a wait for Alvaro Bautista. He's not there yet, though. Ray still leads. Razgatlioglu second, Bautista third, and he's got to fend off Haslam as well. Yeah, it's only a matter of time before Razgatlioglu and Bautista manage to hit the front here. Bautista's going to try and make the move on Razgatlioglu on the start-finish straight. Don't be surprised if he's also able to make the move on Jonathan Ray. Four riders tucked in closely together. Alex Lowe's is losing ground now to Michael Vandermark behind. The uh, top six still all in contention for podium positions. It's a 20-lap race, so still a long way to go. We're about to come in to lap number six. Will this be the lap where Alvaro Bautista hits the front? He's He's already got alongside top rank Razgatlioglu. Razgatlioglu, though, wants to get alongside Ray. They have to be careful not to touch into turn one. Bautista hits the front. Razgatlioglu's got the inside line. He's going to hold up Alvaro Bautista. And Razgatlioglu.
Kluw manages to find his way to the front. And now we'll see if he's got the pace to take the fight to Alvaro Bautista. Bautista down the inside into turn three. Has to be oh so careful that they don't trip over one another. But Jonathan Ray is relegated now down to third. Well, top rack does not want this. So you saw that just how aggressive he was down into turn one. Great stuff from the 54. He knows this is his chance to win a race this season. I said earlier on he wouldn't show respect to Jonathan Ray. He's not going to show any respect to Alvaro Bautista. There's a chance of winning this race if you're on that Pachetti Kawasaki. He knows he needs to get his head down, open up a gap from Alvaro Bautista. But we saw that the pace with Jonathan Ray, last time around Ray was a 42.9, so clearly there is some sort of an issue there because there's no way the pace should be that slow for uh, these riders at the front. That's why the, the group at the front has been so congested as well because they're all being bottled up by just not being at full pace. And clearly while Ray was running that pace, it uh, didn't matter uh, as long as his rivals were behind him. But now they're in front. If they can set an improved pace, they will, of course, pull away from him. Yeah, and that's what's going to be interesting to see whether or not it was trying to conserve that tyre for Jonathan Ray, if he's able to try and attack back to these guys in front of him, or whether or not there is some sort of an issue for him. One of the uh, closest races of the season so far at the front of the field. We've got six riders still within a second of one another. Bautista trying to hook it up off turn 14. He is right on the tail of Toprak Razgatlioglu as they come onto the start finish straight. It's Toprak who leads. Bautista in second. Ray will get a double toe. Bautista cuts the inside line on Razgatlioglu. He's got that move done early. Razgatlioglu, though, will now have the slipstream heading down towards turn number one. Ray is alongside. Razgatlioglu is going to come through for second position here. And the championship contenders are back into the top two spots. That's got the ugly, very kind through turn number two, doesn't try and launch it down the inside. Ray is still up there, still battling. This man just doesn't give in. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting now looking at the lap times. And we've had a full lap with Bautista or Razgariotu hitting the front from Jonathan Ray. The pace still in those high 42s. So maybe just with the track conditions that we have right now, that's just the pace that's available to these riders. Leon Haslam still with them as well. We've seen him and Razgatlioglu swapping positions uh, regularly through this weekend. And now their rivalry is renewed, but this time it's over a place on the podium for third position, currently occupied by the Turkish rider. Alvaro Bautista just getting a little bit of daylight now ahead of Jonathan. Yeah, we know that Bautista, if he's able to get that clear track, he can break away because he's going to have that advantage then to start finish straight. But the big thing for these other riders is they're faster in the middle sectors of the lap, a little bit twistier. That's where they've had their advantage that you need to make sure that you're able to try and stay with Bautista. But for Alvaro Bautista doing exactly what he has to do to make up for the last couple of races where he's lost those points to Jonathan Ray. Aslam certainly looking good at this stage of the race as well. There is a real risk that Jonathan Ray could potentially tumble back uh, down the field fairly dramatically. For the moment, at least, he's holding things up nicely in at second position. He's been fending off top rack for the vast majority of this race. But uh, the risk is that he gets everyone bottled up behind him and then they pass him one by one. Yeah, the one thing for Ray is now that he's been able to get himself back into that second spot. It looks like he probably was just trying to manage the pace in those early laps and... Uh, Bautista comes across the line now down into the low 42, so a 42.3 there for Bautista. Pulls out a third of a second there on Jonathan Ray last time around. So you've got to just keep your head down if you're Alvaro Bautista. If you're Jonathan Ray, now what you want to do is you want to try and just break away from Top Rack and from Leon Haslam. Seven laps gone then here in Portimao. It's Alvaro Bautista, your race leader. He's battled hard to get there ahead of Jonathan Ray and Top Rack Razgatlioglu. Leon Haslam, Alex Loza, Michael van der Mark are all still within the lead pack. So we've got the group of riders chasing podium positions in this 2019 championship all close together. Separate fight further back. Loris Baz in seventh position ahead of Chaz Davies, Marco Melantri and Tom Sykes who's tumbled back to the fringes of the uh, top ten. And they're all still fighting pretty hard further down the order. But it's Bautista who's the man in focus, finally, finally, he looks like he's in a position to take some points away from Jonathan Ray. Yeah, and the big thing for Jonathan Ray is how hard can you fight to be able to hold on to these positions? Are you going to try and close that gap down on Alvaro Bautista? Are you willing to take those risks? Or are you just going to look at it and think, now the goal is make sure that you're able just to get as many points as possible. Jonathan Ray, always smart on the bike. He's not going to be thinking about any unnecessary risks, but he will be thinking about if there's a chance of trying to close down Bautista and challenge him, that he certainly wants to take that. Or indeed, an opportunity opportunity to put Bautista under pressure. We've seen how many times this season Bautista has folded. Well, that's the one thing for uh, all these riders. Whenever you're racing to your pit board, if you're Bautista out in front, you're going to look at that board and you're going to see Jonathan Ray and you're going to see a gap right now, 0.3 of a second. So when you come across the 
cross the line, you're going to see Jonathan Ray plus zero. You want to make sure if you're in second position that that's all that he sees, lap after lap after lap, because Bautista's pushing as hard as he can to open that gap. And once he sees that he's not pulling away, that's whenever it can start to be a bit demoralizing for a rider. That's whenever you've got to just keep applying that pressure. Line of stern, the top four. Leon Haslam has ghosted down the inside on a couple of occasions of Razgat Lioglu in front of him, but he has been complaining about the difficulty of making overtaking maneuvers for him on his machine. And once again, for the moment, he's stranded behind. Yeah, and uh, that's the one thing. The, the top three here have been the top three all the way through the weekend in terms of their race pace. If you're Leon Haslam, you want to try and just make sure you're able to keep them honest at this stage. Haslam doing a good job of that still within a second. He's been able to open up a little bit of gap to Alex Lowe's over the line last time around it was eight tenths of a second between Haslam and Lowe's fastest of the lead quartet on that previous lap uh, Leon Haslam so uh, starting to look good for a challenge at very least for a podium position the Yamaha's gradually slipping away as you said yeah interesting it was Bautista was the slowest of that quartet as well so you can see with Jonathan Ray a bit of a waggle there across the hill so he's still pushing hard but the gap between himself and Alvaro Bautista it's half a second now so but it's from this point in the lap that we saw last time around that Ray was able to start edging himself closer towards Bautista as well he just needs to make sure that you're able to keep challenging Bautista, keep making sure that Bautista's being kept honest because the big thing is, once we get into the final few laps of this race, that's where your tyre management really does come into its own. Bautista seems to be gaining two or three tenths of a second almost down that start-finish straight, out of that final corner and down the start-finish straight. Yeah, easily, and you can see just how big of an advantage that's been by how easily he's been able to make all those overtaking moves. As I said earlier on, a lot of that comes from just the power and the high revving nature of the Ducati V4R's engine, but it also comes from over that crest, just being able to have the confidence from those wings. They do make a big difference. Four tenths of a second, the gap then between Bautista and Ray as we come into lap number 10. Top rack has dropped back now, half a second behind Ray. So, as you said, Steve, it looks as though Ray has stabilised in this race and perhaps a little bit of tyre management and kidology in those early laps. But those have enabled Bautista to hit the front. Has anyone now got an answer? So many times we've seen Bautista uh, out in front and controlling races, but mostly in the early stages of the season. And the one thing is there's no real need for Jonathan Ray to answer back to him it's all about just trying to make sure that you're able to open that gap to top rack and make sure that you're able to just score good points here as it sounds right now the gap in the championship will be down to 91 points but as far as Jonathan Ray is concerned that's still extending the lead that he came to Portugal with when you talk to Ray when you talk to his crew chief Pereira they very rarely talk about results from race by race they talk about round by round and they'll talk about oh at this round we took 10 points out of a rival or we took 20 points out here and we, we might have lost a few points here, and that's what they focus on rather than just looking at the individual races. And the other obvious observation is the fact that Jonathan Ray doesn't even need to be taking points out of Alvaro Bautista. It's Bautista who needs to be gaining ground. So with every passing weekend, as long as that advantage stays where it is, Ray's in a comfortable position. Yeah, it gets harder and harder to try and win the championship if you're Alvaro Bautista, if you're only taking five points out of Jonathan Ray here, a few points there. You need to take big chunks out of Jonathan Ray. And now that this group is starting to stretch out now, everyone's getting a little bit isolated now at half distance. It's all about trying to be as consistent as possible. If you're Jonathan Ray, you're now basically racing this race against top rack Razgadi Yoglu. You're going to be as fast as you can to try and open that gap to top racks so that you're not under pressure. If that means that you're able to keep Bautista under pressure, that's great, but you don't want to try and force any moves at this stage of the race. Not the first time that Ray and Razgadi Yoglu have uh, pretty much come to blows as far as racing directly head-to-head -head for position. Yeah, we've seen it through the course of this season, and uh, if you think back over the last few rounds, you look at Mizano, we saw that in a great last lap scrap. We saw that Top Rack had the chance of maybe making some overtaking moves, but he was also thinking in terms of 20 points for finishing second. It's a good result. We went to Donington Park, and uh, Top Rack made a really good decision with the uh, with the tyres to be able to give himself that confidence all the way through the race, particularly at the end of the race with the tyre life. That played into being able to finish on the podium in Donington were again really strong able to battle with Jonathan Ray but at this stage if you're top rack guys going to be ugly you're thinking I don't want to be able to just fight with these guys I want to beat them and that's where you want to try and make sure that you're making those moves on any of them if the opportunity presents itself right now the gap between top rack and Jonathan Ray in uh, second and third it's up to half a second
Donington last year sticks in my mind as well as a real breakthrough weekend for Top Rack as far as uh, chasing those top positions and podium places and he's gradually improved the consistency uh, with which he rides this season. This is the closest fight on the track at the moment. Tom Sykes defending against uh, Jordi Torres with Sandro Cortese just over half a second back from these two. This is for a place in the top ten. Sykes hasn't been able to uh, lead with the pace that we've seen from him during uh, single lap pace or indeed earlier on in the weekend but uh, Torres is the man who is best placed to take advantage of it and that'll be a good effort from Jordi Torres if he can get back up into the top 10 for the first time since Laguna Seca last time out meanwhile towards the front of the field Haslam starting to have to defend now against Alex Lowe's that was a really slow lap last time around a full second he lost on that lap and Lowe's makes it look very easy indeed into turn number one so Haslam dropping off his pace in the second half of this race yeah and it wasn't in any individual sector where Haslam lost that time Lowe's just picking up a couple of tenths in each of the sectors so probably not a mistake from Haslam or just Lowe's just being able to keep his consistency all the way and uh, fast lap from Lowe's pulled in half a second and was still able to stretch out a little bit more time for Michael Vandermark behind this group as well so good stuff there for the 22 and another good move down into turn one that's where he's looked really strong in the Super Bowl race and now in the first half of this race as well further back uh, problems for Chaz Davies uh, who uh, has rejoined the circuit but Davies has dropped out of the top 10 so the fight between Sykes and Torres is now over ninth position still Sykes has it for the moment disappointing end to the weekend for Chaz Davies who uh, doesn't look like he's going to do much about scoring in this race and uh, after a, such a strong start in race number one it's all gone downhill we pick up the number seven now yeah, he had been running in eighth spot there, so good recovery from 14th on the bridge for Chaz Davis. Now he's all the way down the order. Hopefully he'll be able just to at least use the second half of this race to gain some valuable information and try and take it from that for the next couple of rounds because he's made a step forward. We saw that in Laguna Seca. He also had a bit of progress here this weekend, particularly in that race one. That's the issue that he had down in turn one. So Chaz Davis tumbling back. He's lost uh, well over uh, 10 seconds as a result of that problem. So even if the bike were to get going at full speed again, it would be just a question of uh, minor placings and uh, minor points. Not so for Alvaro Bautista out in front. Not with the dominance that we saw from him in the early stages of the campaign, but he has got two-thirds of a second lead over Jonathan Ray and Raz Gatlioglu. Chase on for fourth position. Haslam hasn't given up. He had a look down on Lowe's into uh, turn number one. So whatever problem it was for uh, Leon Haslam, he has certainly uh, got back on the pace again on uh, this lap as we watch the riders making their way into turn one. Go down into turn one. Heavy breakers on there. And you can see the gaps between Bautista Ray and Top Rack down in third that stayed pretty consistent. All those riders running pretty much the same pace right now second and a half splitting the top three but uh, for Jonathan Ray the gap between himself and uh, top rack they're about six seven tenths of a second for most of the last few laps so just maintaining that gap and that's really the key thing for Ray two races in one almost at this stage with Bautista, Ray and Raz Gatlioglu, as you said, starting to stretch away from one another to an extent. But then there's a gap of almost three seconds now to Alex Lowe's. And that really, that uh, deficit has uh, sprung up almost out of nowhere from Leon Haslam dropping back off the pace. Yeah, and it's really been what the pace from the weekend has suggested. That the top three just have that bit of an edge. We know that Lowe's suffered from uh, tyre issues in yesterday's race. The grip just falling off once he got to two thirds distance. So we're around about that time now. Obviously, Yamaha would have been trying to make some steps with that to try and find some improvements. They found big improvements during the course of the Super Bowl race. Now it's all about trying to make sure you're able to hold off Leon Haslam. You can see Michael Vandermark just uh, edging himself closer and closer. And Loris Baz as well, picking up a lot of time over the uh, last couple of laps. Remember, um, Baz has been uh, working his way steadily up the field all weekend long, having started well in at practice, but not getting the desired results here yesterday. Well, today he's trying to make a bid for a really strong performance. He's up in P7, but watch out for him over the next couple of laps, because as I say, he's been making up ground. Yeah, Baz all the way through the weekend been really strong as well, really consistent on that Tenkade. Yamaha, just unfortunate from this weekend, sort of turn on that qualifying crash in the Super Bowl session. And uh, for Baz, he's had that pace. And now it's just a question of can he close up in this gap? Because this group of three, they are fighting with one another now. Are they going to hold each other enough to make this a group of four? Sykes and uh, Torres still fighting uh, further back. Torres getting very close over the uh, start-finish line in front of our commentary position last time around as uh, Lowe still defends against Haslam. And as you've said, Vandermark has taken that as an opportunity just to steadily move onto the tail of these two. And uh, Vandermark's never afraid of putting a move in. Yeah, Vandermark's always willing just to try and 
force a move as well. We saw it actually, one of the best moves we saw all season was his move yesterday on Charles Davis around the outside through turn 15 and uh, try and make that move on to the start finish straight. But uh, obviously we know that the Ducati with Davis had struggled a little bit through there, whereas the Yamaha really strong in that section. The Kawasaki good through there as well. So maybe for Michael Van der Mark, he'll have to try something a little bit different in this race. But he just needs to make sure he's able to close up that gap on the number 91 in front of him. But the good thing for Van der Mark is he seems a lot faster through turns eight and nine. That's where he was losing all the time in the Super Bowl race earlier on. And it seems that Haslam is fastest through this twisty uh, kind of infield section rather than under braking into the heavy braking zone so that makes it that much more complicated to make an overtake yeah exactly and that's the one thing about Portimao there's so many different lines you can take around this track there's so many different approaches you can take there isn't a racing line per se there isn't an ideal line there's just where your bike seems to work or where you work and that's where the rider can make such a big difference around here it's are you willing to ride over the bumps has them trying to get down the inside into turn one we know that Lowe's is really strong in the brakes but Haslam's going to take that inside line good riding there from Leon Haslam. Leon Haslam through for fourth position. Lowe's will make the cut back though. So uh, not over, not done and dusted yet for fourth position. And Michael van der Mark seizes his opportunity. We said he wasn't afraid of making a move. He's made an absolute lunge into turn number three and then he swings the back tire out as if to say, you're not coming through there. Well, Haslam says I am anyway. And up he goes to recover the position. But van der Mark's getting feisty. And these two have swapped and changed positions on a couple of occasions already. Fourth position, it's going down to the wire. Yeah, do you want to know why Portimao one of the best bike tracks in the world. It's because one corner leads into the other. Haslam gets down the inside into turn one, but runs in a little bit hot. That means that Lowe's is then able just to carry his normal line, carry his speed through turn two, get back in front. And then because Haslam's lost speed through turn one, it opens the door for Van der Mark to try and attack into three. That leads directly into four, and that's what means that Van der Mark then loses that spot to Haslam. Great riding for these three. Let's see if uh, Loris Baz can bring himself back in because there's just a few tenths of a second now between Van der Mark and Baz. Look, there he is at the back of your shot there. It's a four-rider scrap. I did say that Baz was coming on strong and it would only be a couple of laps. Well, it's been a couple of laps and there he is. Haslam and uh, Lowe's and Van der Mark, the two Pata Yamaha riders, are in real danger here of being swallowed up by Loris Baz, who's getting in in the mix. The Tenkate mid-season signing. Uh, Haslam at the moment is uh, challenging, but uh, Baz is pushing. Yeah, Baz doing a good job here. Just looking at the gap at the front of the field as well. Bautista, Ray and Razgariyoglu, that's all starting to spread out now again. It's up to two seconds between uh, the race leader and the man in third. So Toprak losing a little bit of ground there to Jonathan Ray now. Leon Haslam looking for a move into turn number one. He has struggled to put in moves under braking into this first turn, but not this time. Will he get it stopped in time? Can Lowe's get the cut back again? Yes, he can. Exactly the same move as a lap ago. Exactly the same result. This time, though, Haslam tries to cover the line, and Van der Mark's going to do exactly the same. I think they put on a slow motion replay of exactly what we saw a lap ago, because that's how it's panned out. Only this time, Van der Mark has held the position. Yeah, the only thing is Van der Mark's learned his lesson there through turn four. So good stuff from Van der Mark. To to pick off Haslam but uh, you can see there from Haslam he just couldn't get that bike stopped on the run into turn one he had issues yesterday with the front tire issues with the braking point on that Kawasaki and maybe just also recurring a little bit here as we get into the final third of this race wonder whether Haslam got rather frustrated behind Lowe's he knows he's got the pace through that uh, middle sequence of corners around this circuit but he's not able to unleash it because he hasn't been able to get through on Lowe's in the braking zone look at his speed on the tail of Michael Vandermark here this is allowing uh, Alex Lowe's to check out yeah, look at Vandermark as he came across that crest as well. You could see just how tough he was. Bass down the inside, wants to have a go at uh, Haslam for sixth position. Haslam covers it off. We've got Vandermark, Haslam and Baz all locked closely together. These three fighting among one another, allowing Lowe's to escape. Yeah, and I think looking at uh, Vandermark, it looks like he's just holding up those two through that section as well. It looked like he was a bit slower through some of the mid-corner stuff there. But uh, for Haslam, he needs to make the move down into turn one and uh, try and make it stick this time. It's all about trying to get that bike stopped because Loris Baz is going to be there ready to pounce as well. Baz has seen what Vandermark's done as well. So he'll be thinking in terms of, can I try and make the move down into turn three as well? Four laps remaining then here in Portimao. Will there be any moves on to this start finish straight? Leon Haslam tucked in right behind Michael Vandermark. When will he duck out? Will he be able to get it stopped in time this time? He breaks earlier, so he'll make turn one, but uh, he'll have to find a different place to get past Michael Vandermark. No doubt about it, Haslam appears to be the fastest of this quartet. He can't show it. 
Yeah, for Haslam, he's just been bottled up here, and that's the good thing about Port Meadow as well. There's so many different areas of the track where one bike can be quicker or different to another, and uh, it's all about trying to make it where you can be quick onto the key areas, like down into five for Haslam here. Here he goes, down the inside into turn five. He's got to watch out on the entry because it's bumpy. He's got to watch out for the cutback from Michael Vandermark because Vandermark knew he was beaten on the entry to that turn. He tried to run in deep and slice back to the inside, but Haslam had got the move made. That was a really strong move from Leon Haslam. He couldn't make it stick into turn one. He's made it stick elsewhere, and Vandermark will now be exposed to Loris Bass. Yeah, the good thing for Haslam is his normal line through five pushes him a little bit wide to take a late second apex. When you're trying to take that tight line on the inside over the bumps, that also means that he's actually pushing himself out towards where he normally is on the track as well once you're through into that position. So good riding there for Haslam. Well, how many times did I say in the opening few rounds of the season, forget about Bautista, he's away and gone. He is away and gone. One and a half seconds is the lead here over Jonathan Ray, but Ray seems absolutely content just to manage that. Only five points lost, and over the course of the weekend, as you said previously, Steve, it's still a net gain on Bautista. Yeah, and that's all that matters for Jonathan Ray. As it stands right now, 91 points will be the championship gap. Jonathan Ray would be disappointed to have not done a clean sweep here in Portimao if Bautista manages to win, but if Ray holds on to that second spot, picks up 20 points, that's more than good enough for him with three rounds left after this. This will be a satisfactory result for Raz Gatlioglu as well. Still close in that fight for fourth position. The four of them covered by 1.2 seconds. That looks like it's going to go right down to the chequered flag. Be interested to see how that pans out with Baz trying to get on terms. Vandermark dropping back ever so slightly, but Haslam coming on strong once again against Lars. Yeah, and we saw with Vandermark that it looked like once he came through that uh, run down the hill between eight and nine, that again he just had that little bit of an instability. So maybe as that tire is starting to wear, maybe he's just starting to struggle a little bit with that. That's why he's dropped a little bit off Leon Haslam. So it really comes down to Lowe's against Haslam. We've seen that Haslam has that ability to make the move on Alex Lowe's, but he hasn't been able to make, get the bike stopped. Lowe's were actually really mature riding just to understand everything that's happening around him and then pick off that place as he came through turn one on a couple of occasions against Haslam. He now knows that he's got two and a half laps to try and make sure that you can hold on to that position watching the front runners for the moment but this uh, duel looks to have been resolved in the early stages of the race Jonathan Ray would have to put in something very special in the uh, final two laps to find a way past Bautista who appears to just be managing his advantage we have seen him fall from the front in the past in 2019 this is the type of performance that Bautista has needed in uh, recent rounds to really get his season back on track I wonder two things one whether it's come too late and two whether he can replicate it with greater free could see in the remaining rounds. Well, it's come too late unless Jonathan Ray has another problem later in the season, but Ray's been so consistent all the way through this year. I think all bar about 35 laps he's been in those podium positions all the way through the season. So that just shows how consistent he's been and how difficult it is to try and break him down. Baz has managed to get himself through on Vandermark into that sixth position. So Baz, is he going to be close enough to try and attack Leon Haslam? The gap right now is a second and a half, two laps to go. It's going to be a big ask for Baz. He's probably going to have to settle for that sixth position, even though it looks like Vandermark might have just cotton through across the line as well. The two pairs were side by side as they came past our commentary position into uh, turn number one. And we're watching top rack Raz Gatlioglu in third position. There's an almighty dogfight going on for fourth position with Lowe's, Haslam, Vandermark and Basel tucked pretty close together. Vandermark, though, dropping back from uh, the two riders directly in front of him. He started to become lengthened from that fight now for fourth position. And it looks as though the best Vandermark can do in this race is sixth. That's great news for Alex Lowe's in the context of the championship. Yeah, exactly what Lewis has to do, but he's still got another lap and a half to try and hold off Leon Haslam. We've seen that Haslam's had that ability to close right up onto Lowe's. Haslam knows he's going to have to make that move into turn one, but the key thing is, can you break deep enough into turn one to make that move on Lowe's? Because we've even seen Alvaro Bautista have to cede that position back to Alex Lowe's during the Super Bowl race. It's going to be tough for Haslam to make that move, even though he does seem to have that faster bike right now. Lowe's was uh, mighty combative against uh, Alvaro Bautista. Nobody's been able to put up quite such a strong resistance. We did see uh, Marco Melandri have a go at defending against Alvaro Bautista as well, but 
Uh, it was certainly Lowe's who put in the most robust defence. Uh, and what kind of defence will he be able to put in against uh, Leon Haslam? The gap at the front of the field, less than a second now, which is the first time for quite some laps. But you sense that that's just Bautista managing his advantage here. Yeah, Bautista, eight tenths in front as they come across the line. You can see Top Rack coming across the line there as well in the Look how close third those position. two are for fourth. Look at They're Haslam. Going side by side. Haslam's looking to the inside into turn number one. Can Lowe's outbreak him and sweep around the outside? The answer is no. Haslam is through for fourth Six position, but Lowe's gets the cut back yet again. And Haslam runs right on to the paint on the outside of the circuit there. He's going to have to find something different in a different area of the circuit. Still close in that battle for sixth position, point zero between Vandermark and Baz as they came over the uh, line. Here is that fight, and uh, Baz has the pace, but just like Haslam in front, can't find a way through, can't find a way to make it stick. Into turn five, Vandermark holds him off. Baz will go in deeper, and Vandermark manages to hold the line. So uh, Baz uh, certainly faster than Vandermark. Vandermark's tailed off quite dramatically over the last couple of laps, and Baz is going to make an absolute lunge down the inside. Incredible stuff from Loris Baz, determined to get the move done. Couldn't do it in any of the conventional passing places, so it's a uh, uh, last of the late breakers. Big lunge from Baz, he finds his way through. Yeah, and if you're Michael Vandermark, are you going to be able to try and attack again? Maybe you're going to try something down in towards the next right-hander. It looks like he's a bit too far behind from that. It certainly looked as though he was going for that line, didn't it? We uh, cut away to the race leaders because this gap has really closed up. Jonathan Ray is at least trying to put some pressure here on Alvaro Bautista, who slowed up on these final two laps. Now, has he got enough for a sprint finish still, or has he slowed up just a little bit too soon here? Jonathan Ray is going to challenge Alvaro Bautista right to the flag here. Closest finish of 2019 so far. Ray's got the run off the final turn. Bautista has the grunt of the Ducati. And Alvaro Bautista is back on top here in Portimao. Bautista delighted with that crucial victory in the context of his season. But Jonathan Ray has once again waved the Bautista over the line, almost metaphorically, as if to say, don't worry, I'm still here. I'm right behind you. Yeah, you have to look at that and wonder what happened to Bautista on the last lap. It'll be interesting to see what he has to say down in Park Fermi. But back to winning ways for Alvaro Bautista. And you can see the relief for him as he came across the line as well. Championship gap down to 91 points. So Alvaro can be quite happy that he's managed to pick up that race victory. But uh, Jonathan Ray can be very happy that over the weekend he's extended that championship lead. Lowe's Haslam was the order uh, for fourth position in the end. Chaz Davies just coming over the line, so he has managed to get to the finish, but outside of the point scoring positions with those uh, mechanical problems, he was back on the pace in the uh, uh, last lap, well, broadly, the uh, pace of the riders around him at very least, uh, but Davies failing to score in that race with uh, mechanical problems, as I've said. No such problems for his teammate, enemy, teammate Alvaro Bautista who takes a chicken flag. Yeah, and Alvaro Bautista able to do that despite, as you can see there, a bit of pain. pain there for him. That's from his shoulder injury and also probably just from the relief of actually getting back onto the top step of the podium. But uh, Bautista with the fastest lap in this race, it also means that he wraps up the Pirelli Best Lap Award winner for the season. And uh, for Alvaro Bautista, at least he's been able to pick up a race victory once again. But in that uh, scrap further down the field with uh, Lowe's and Haslam, we saw that Lowe's was able to come out on top. Tell you what, he wasn't half a cool customer during that last lap, just knew exactly what he had to do. So good stuff from Lowe's to be able to back up that uh, top three finish in the Super Bowl race. And crucially, he did what Van der Mark couldn't do, and that's keep behind the rider who was directly behind him. And therefore, Lowe's is going to take a five-point margin over Michael Van der Mark in the championship. Yeah, and for Van der Mark, you'd imagine that uh, just struggling a little bit in those closing stages, so maybe tyre issues for him in those final stages. But uh, for Van der Mark, at least able to have that podium in yesterday's race, and uh, he's at least staying in contention for that scrap for third. Not an awful lot to choose between Lowe's, Van der Mark, Haslam, and uh, Raz Gadioglu. Just uh, thinking about Alvaro Bautista and the way he slowed on those final two laps, I wonder whether that was problems with the injury as much as anything that he felt he needed to ease off the pace. Yeah, quite possible for Bautista. He knew he also had that pace in the final sector that as long as he came into turn 15 in front that there was no way he was going to get beaten. So maybe just managing it in those final stages. But the fact that he lost so much ground in those final couple of laps to Jonathan Ray has to be a little bit of a worry for him, but uh, at least able to claim that race victory and uh, get back to winning ways for Bautista. Clearly, you can only beat what is, what's in front of you, but you wonder what would have happened in a 21-lap race. That was uh, really uh, dramatic on the uh, final few turns, and it came from nowhere as well. As I said, Bautista uh, on the penultimate lap, I'd said, uh, starting to lose ground to Jonathan Ray. He lost around about four tenths of a second, if I remember off the top of my head. Um, but to lose the best part of a second in one lap, uh, that really was uh, almost 
just uh, catching Bautista by surprise there later. Yeah, and you can see the crowd there giving Jonathan Ray an ovation. You can see all the Northern Irish flags just opposite uh, the Kawasaki box there. So he's just about to come back into the uh, park for our conditions and down in towards the uh, in towards the podium celebrations. But for Jonathan Ray, just out there, keen to just give his appreciation to uh, all the fans that come out here in Portimao. And a successful weekend, uh, matching the results that he managed in uh, Laguna Seca, uh, obviously with uh, two wins and then a second place in the uh, final race of the weekend. And frankly, that's all he needs to take this title. Yeah, exactly. Jonathan Ray's not going to be too upset to have lost out on that winning streak that he's had here in Portimao. This is the first time he's been defeated on a Kawasaki here in Portimao, but he's not going to be concerned with that because once again he's been able to look at this weekend and see 91 points between himself and uh, Alvaro Bautista in the championship standings. Theoretically Jonathan Ray can wrap up the championship at the next round of the championship. Bautista looked really emotional over the line but Jonathan Ray also looks as though he is absolutely spent. Yeah and it's the relief of knowing that you've come through this weekend, a weekend that Jonathan Ray would have earmarked all the way through the season as this is a round that he can win and uh, this is a round where he'll feel that he would have been the favourite to have come through that with two wins and then the second place finish and extending the championship lead it means that it's job done for Jonathan Ray now the focus for him turns from being solely about trying to make sure you can get those good results to now it's about trying to make sure you can get across the line and if there's one thing that Jonathan Ray has shown us over the last few years that he knows how to do that once the championship is there to be decided not much doubt that it's good for the championship, though, uh, in the context of uh, the perspective of a neutral, shall we say, that Bautista has managed to uh, take points from Ray today. Yeah, and you want to see Bautista winning races because he's shown all the way through the season how fast and how consistent he can be during races. The unfortunate thing for Bautista is he's just made too many mistakes, and uh, that's why he's fallen down in the championship order. But for Bautista, he's now got nine races left in the championship. You want to win as many races as possible between now and the end of the season before he leaves Ducati. Did Ray go uh, too soft in the early laps? Did Ray need to push harder in those early laps to try and defend the lead rather than having to attack for it later on? Well, the one thing that we saw all the way through this weekend is that uh, down that star finish rate, it's just easy play for Bautista to make those moves. That means it's also very difficult to try and break away from him, to try and attack him back down in towards turn one. So for Jonathan Ray, he's managed to come out of this race with what he wanted, which is just to make sure you've got that championship lead and a healthy points advantage going into Magni Core in a few weeks' time. So yeah, maybe he could have raced slightly differently, but uh, given the conditions that we that we saw here today, 45 degrees track temperature, and it'll be interesting to see what everyone says about how the race progressed. Jonathan Ray didn't really do an awful lot wrong by trying to hold up the field in those early laps. And in those early laps, there were uh, spells where it looked as though Raz Gatlioglu, Lowe's, Haslam, uh, Vandermark all had the pace to absolutely challenge Jonathan Ray. But once he needed to, he was able to find that little bit of an extra gear and uh, pull away. Yeah, well, it was bottled up that much that uh, I was thinking that Jonathan Ray must have had a problem, you know, but uh, that was just him trying to manage the pace. And once he's managing it like that, it means that everyone can get quite uh, congested there in that battle at the front. But once we saw that Bautista hit the front, Ray then had to try and answer back to that. We saw that the gap between himself and Top Rack just started to stretch out the 10th here, a 10th there, and that's all that it takes. And uh, suddenly we were left with just that uh, leading th three riders getting themselves a little bit isolated in a lot of ways just until that uh, final couple of corners from Alvaro Bautista. For the cynics who uh, don't uh, consider motorsport to be uh, true athleticism, they need to watch images like this of relief, of exhaustion, of aggression, of agony. Uh, the things that these riders put themselves through is absolutely astonishing. Yeah, that's the one thing is that all these riders, they're all carrying injuries, they're all carrying knocks, they all train as hard as any other sportsman and uh, arguably with the conditions that they have to race on, with the injuries they have, the need for a balance is far greater in motorcycle racing and in most other sports you need to be incredibly flexible because you need to be able to move around the bike but also more importantly you need to be able to just take the abuse that comes from the inevitable crashes that are going to happen that's where all the yoga all the stretching really does play into the hands of all these riders that take that extra effort to try and prepare all the gym work that pays off on a day like today where it's really hot conditions you can see just how tough it is for the riders and how much they're sweating down there and top rack definitely put on a bit of a sweat to finish in third today but back on the podium top rack rise get a yoglu Tabaras Gatiaglu, your 10th World SBK podium, congratulations. Thank you, and uh, yesterday for me, very bad start because qualifying, uh, I don't wait 13th position, and uh, today, this morning, uh, we try a new setup, 
and with Tim and uh, thanks to Tim and my uh, because very good uh, setup today because uh, second race for me very uh, special because I need a game podium and I'm really happy today and uh, yeah, we see next race thank you Dün çok kötü geçti e, sıralamalar çünkü e, istediğim derecede yapamadım. E, bugün kısa yarışta dördüncü olduk ve son yarışa dördüncü start aldık. E, bu bizim için daha güzel oldu çünkü e, Jonathan Ray'i takip edebildim. E, tekrar podyum istiyordum. Daha iyisi olabilirdi ama e, son turlara doğru lastikler çok kaymaya başladı. E, mutluyuz tekrar podyumdayız. Diğer yarışlara daha güzel olacak. Thank you. Thank you to Top Rack Razgatlioglu, you can see down here. Top Rack then back on to the podium. And for the first time since uh, race two in the USA, he has had a really strong recent run, Steve, and there's no doubt about it, the attention that he has courted through this season, because there has been a lot of interest in signing Top Rack for next season, all justified. Yeah, Top Rack's done really well all the way through the season, really matured into that role as well in his in uh, this year within the Pichetti team and the progress that they've made with Top Rack has really been what's allowed the, him to get himself to get the most out of his talent because there's never been any question about talent for Top Rack. He's always shown just how good he can be on a bike. And now it's about trying to make sure you do that week in, week out. And at the end of the day for Razgur Yoglu, this is another round where he's had a podium. And that uh, that run just keeps getting longer and longer for him. That's exactly what you have to do. So really good performance once again from Razgur Yoglu all the way through the weekend. He just needs to find that bit of pace on the Super Bowl tyre. Jonathan Ray has certainly had the pace all weekend. He sees his winning run around this circuit ended, but takes the runner-up position. Jonathan Ray, you believe in that victory till the very last corner. Congratulations, second position. It's a good position. Yeah, super happy. You know, I could see Alvaro making so many mistakes, and um, I just it was enough to keep me uh, motivated to keep pushing. Unfortunately, where he was really strong, we couldn't be strong today. And uh, but I felt so good with my team. You know, on the bike, they give me a great bike from. From yesterday, we went back to the setting of FP3, and I felt really strong at the end to be low 43. So uh, very happy with our effort. Congratulations to Alvaro and Ducati. It was a really nice race win. I'm looking forward to France now. So uh, yeah, thanks everyone for coming out. We got a great, we got a great crowd here, and um, see you next time. Cheers. We will indeed see you. You said previously that uh, the title decider could well be Manicor. If uh, Jonathan Ray can get the right results, he'll obviously rely on Alvaro Bautista uh, making mistakes as well. Yeah, and he did talk there about Bautista's mistakes. What are they going to be? They're actually going to be just small errors that he's made in that infield section. Bautista struggled through there all the way through the weekend. There's one of the mistakes, just running all the way wide through uh, turn one there for Bautista. But the mistakes that Bautista makes, they're more just because he struggled to get that bike to work in that infield section. He talked about it after yesterday's race. And uh, also, just as you can see there, with that shoulder injury as well, just trying to get that ice down, cool down after that race. We saw the medical director over just to check in his condition as well but Bautista with that shoulder injury it also means that he can't quite break with the same force you're having to put so much strain all the way through the joint and uh, clearly that would have also been a factor for him but Bautista as far as it's concerned in this race the mistakes few and far between between because he's been able to get that result that he needed being able to get himself back into winning races and uh, really good performance from Bautista all the way through this weekend with the exception of that Super Bowl lap and the opening laps of a couple of races but uh, for Alvaro Bautista once he's been able to get clear air once he's been able to make those moves he's been really strong I don't think anyone really acknowledged um, what a big injury that was for Bautista. Clearly, I think partly because he immediately came back out onto the track for uh, the race the uh, next day, uh, Bautista um, tried to ride with it, and obviously that was unsuccessful. But I think the length of the summer break almost made people forget about that injury. The fact that he is really struggling now, he was very fortunate, the timing of it. Yeah, and for Bautista, he'll know that as well. But this is bike racing, you're going to get hurt, especially whenever you're training and different things. That's why we see so many riders getting hurt when they're motocrossing. Like Bautista earlier in the year, he had his back injury after a motocross crash. We've seen it where riders fall off in a supermoto, and again, they can get themselves hurt doing that. And uh, all the different training that riders do, even out in your bicycle, you'll see riders where they can have a crash and uh, suffer some injuries from that. So there's lots of different ways that these riders can get hurt that's why 
they're always carrying some sort of a knock and uh, some sort of discomfort but uh, it's all about how you can react to that how you can ride through the pain and it's always an interesting question when you ask riders what's the first time you rode through pain and most time they'll say like oh I had a crash and I broke a nail and I you know getting my glove on was a bit hard and I was thinking about it all the way in the build up to the race but once I'm in the race then suddenly I don't think of it and then they move on to the next injury could be where they've broken a bone and they have to just try and react to it and then suddenly you see riders where they'll race with a broken ankle and they'll race with this, that and the other or Michael Vandermark after his wrist injury in uh, Mizano able to get back in action a couple of weeks later and riders just find that inner resolve and that strength to be able to race through the pain barrier and once they're on the bike, once they're racing the adrenaline can take over but uh, that can only last for so long and maybe in those final couple of laps that just seem to catch up a little bit with Bautista but let's hear from the race winner here in race two in Portimao, Alvaro Bautista Alvaro Bautista, back of winning ways in style. What a great race. Yeah, I'm so happy, so happy to win again, no? Because long time since uh, my last victory and to do here in front of these amazing people with my uh, fan club uh, supporting me every time, especially in the last, in, in the last few races that uh, were not uh, easy for, for me, but they always support me. So I'm, I want to, to thanks to all of them because uh, I, I felt his support. No, uh, today has been really, really tough for me. I not feel 100% uh, fit. Uh, after yesterday's race, I, I lose a lot of energy for today. And yeah, at the end, in the last laps, uh, I was fighting with the bike because uh, the tire were dropped a lot and, and, and my physical uh, was uh, destroyed. You know? So I'm so happy to win again. And thanks to all these people for, for coming and for supporting me. Thanks. La verdad que contento, muy contento de, de volver a, a la victoria. Creo que desde Misano no, no conseguí ganar y bueno, muy contento de haberlo hecho aquí, ¿no? en un circuito donde es la primera vez para mí. Y, y bueno, rodeado de esta gente tan maravillosa, de mi club de fans que está aquí apoyándome. Eh, sobre todo en las últimas carreras, en los malos momentos ha estado siempre creyendo en mí. Mira, y hemos conseguido ganar. No ha sido una carrera fácil porque de ayer ya estaba un poco físicamente tocado y bueno, las últimas vueltas he sufrido mucho, entre que los neumáticos no estaban para muchas y yo físicamente no me encontraba del todo bien, eh, me ha costado acabar la carrera, pero bueno, gracias a, al apoyo de esta gente creo que me ha dado un, un último empujoncito, así que gracias a todos ellos por, por venir aquí y animar, gracias. Alvaro Bautista doffs his cap to his fan club here today that he said the most important thing about those fans is that they continue to support him in the bad moments because there have been too many of them of late for Alvaro Bautista. Yeah, unfortunately for Bautista that has been the case. But uh, once again, we saw that when he's on form, he can win races in this class. The biggest issue is you have to be able to do that for 13 rounds and three races for each of those rounds if you're going to beat Jonathan Ray. That's what everyone's found over the last few years in this class, whether it was Tom Sykes, Chaz Davis, anyone else going up against Jonathan Ray. It's not so much that you need to beat Jonathan on any given day, you need to beat him more often than not and uh, Ray is so consistent all the way through the season. That's what puts the pressure on all of his rivals and uh, for Bautista you can see just the uh, relief of getting through that race. He said that uh, just in those final moments of the race that clearly just the whole toll of just having to race with that injury started to get the most of him but uh, or get the better of him and uh, able to hold on though for Bautista and good to see him get back to winning ways because he's been so strong at times through this season and you don't want to see any rider that's just consistently making those kind of mistakes they've given up all those points to Jonathan Ray through the season so hopefully this is now the springboard board for Bautista to get back to that form for the final three rounds of the year raw emotion for Alvaro Bautista. It's quite clear that he hasn't given up. If he was going to throw in the towel, it would have been when he found himself down in 18th position in race one. He refused to give up, fought his way through progressively to fourth position. He had another opportunity. He went back in the Tissot Super Bowl race and had to fight his way through. And now he's uh, managed to fight his way to the front today. So uh, Bautista showing a lot of character this weekend for me. Yeah, really good. It's just been down to that uh, opening lap in each of the races. He's given up too much to his rivals, but at least in this race, he was still able to recover from that and be able to pick his way through the crowd from sixth position at one stage in this race to be able to get himself back up into the race lead and the eventual win. So two riders already on the podium and they're the men who will flank Alvaro Bautista.
And while there certainly is a significant number of his fan club here, Banner's showing his race number, number 19, of course. He was hoping to make it number one, but it's Jonathan Ray who is still very much the man to beat. Ray leads the championship by 91 points over Bautista. Alex Lowe's sitting in third place, defending an advantage. He's got uh, Leon Haslam to worry about, but he's also going to have this man, Toprak Razgatlioglu, to one worry about in the latter stages of the season because Razgatlioglu has continued to be consistent, and if he can keep banking podiums in the latter stages of the campaign, Razgatlioglu will be a danger to those two Yamaha riders ahead. Yeah, podium after podium and round after round for uh, Toprak through the course of this season, and that's what he can do. The big thing is that he's still got to take big chunks out of those Yamaha riders. We've got three rounds left and uh, he needs to make sure he's able to pick up those 25 points at times just to be able to close down that gap because that's been the target for Top Rack. It's about trying to win that first race with uh, the Pachetti team in World SBK. He wasn't quite on the pace to be able to do it here today. He uh, certainly fought hard for it. He uh, wasn't afraid to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bautista or Ray in the early stages in particular. Yeah, we saw with uh, Razgadi Ogden that he just had the pace to be with them and it looked at times that he could have closed that gap but uh, just uh, lost a tenth here, a tenth there compared to the race leaders and uh, once we saw Bautista hit the front and the pace start to drop again, it was really Bautista and Ray that had just that tenth of a second per lap on top rack that just uh, they were able to start stretching out that lead. But again, good performance from Razgadi Ogden this weekend, very well deserved podium. Team representative receives the uh, trophy as the winner, and now it's time for the national anthem. anthem of the winning manufacturer. Alvaro Bautista then back on top here today. Celebrations for the Spaniard. Jonathan Ray alongside him won't be too disappointed about seeding only five points in that race. His advantage is still built further over the course of this weekend as a whole. And only three rounds remain for Bautista to try and overcome the best part of 100 points. If Bautista can pull it off, it'll be a miracle. But miracles are made at the elite of uh, world sport. And you could see the raw emotion. You could see Jonathan Ray um, determined and fighting back in the final lap. You saw Alvaro Bautista overcome injury to take the checkered flag there. And what could a fully fit Alvaro Bautista do in the closing rounds of this campaign? They're all questions still to be answered in 2019. A long way from over. Yeah, for Alvaro Bautista, it's all about trying to make sure that you're able to keep spraying that Prosecco and uh, keep picking up those winners' trophies. All you can do is try and apply some pressure on Jonathan Ray. As it stands right now, Jonathan's got one hand on that trophy, but it's all about what happens at the next round. We could easily have some mixed conditions at Magni Coil. We could easily have a very technical racetrack that uh, can catch out any rider at any given time. So for uh, Jonathan Ray, he'll know that he needs to be racing now with that one eye on the championship and making sure that you're just able to pick up the best result possible at each race, just like he's done at each round through the course of this season so far. First time he scored 25 championship points since race one in Jerez. And uh, that's the key thing for Bautista about how difficult this has been over the course of the last couple of months since we went to Jerez. That crash that he had in race two, that really was the tipping point in this championship. So it's time for the classic photograph of the Podium trio, third position, Toprak Razgatlioglu, second place, Jonathan Ray, 
and your race winner here today, Alvaro Bautista. I say the first time he scored 25 championship points because, of course, he did win the uh, Tissot Super Bowl race in Misano, but that is for 12 rather than the big 25. Bautista back on top here today, and he has uh, lauded his fan club, and they are certainly delighted about his success. Bautista just needs to keep those wins coming now. Yeah, exactly, and uh, try and focus one race at a time, one day at a time. But uh, for Bautista, it'll just be important to have gotten back onto that top step of the podium. And uh, now we'll see what happens in the final three rounds. Of course, you would expect that in Argentina and Qatar, the Ducati is going to be strong. Magni Cordo is going to be another tough race. It could be another one of those races that Jonathan Murray really feels very confident about being able to win races, even in a straight up fight against Bautista. France, Argentina and Qatar still to come in 2019. Manny Court next up. So next time out, the Motul FIM Superbike World Championship heads to the Circuit de Nevers, Manicourt playing host to the 10th round of the 2019 campaign. The last European destination before the two end of season flyaways, the French round will move us one step closer to settling the title fight. Rejoin us here in Portimao to take a look at the race results, race number two from the Acerbis Portuguese round and how the championship standings look ahead of the final European trip on this 2019 calendar. Result of race two then, Alvaro Bautista back not only on the podium, but on the top step of it. Only a tenth of a second, he lost over a second in the final two laps to Jonathan Ray, who refused to give up right to the flag. Close race throughout, entertaining race throughout. Bautista, though, scoring the 25 he needs to get his championship challenge back on track. He's just a point away from breaking the 400 mark now. Alvaro Bautista in his debut World SBK campaign. Ray in second position, damage limitation. He didn't look too disturbed about that during the race, but at the end, he certainly showed plenty of emotion himself, much like Bautista with that raw emotion of the victory. 